With this video, we're going to start applying our concepts of uh, DCF valuation into a live company. So we are picking up Infosys, uh, which is India's premier IT services firm for this valuation exercise. We're going to implement everything that we have learned about DCF valuation so far into this particular model. Uh, we're going to project revenues. We are going to project costs. We are going to project cash flows of the company based on other projections around capital expenditures of the firm. We're going to try and find out what is going to be a cost of equity or cost of capital. What method are we going to use in terms of evaluating Infosys and what would the final stock price of Infosys arrive based on our, our broad judgment of how we are going to value it, right? So what we see here in this particular file is uh, is a balance sheet and PNL data for Infosys for the previous four years, uh, starting 2012 onwards, going all the way up to 2015. Right now, what we uh, what we see here is uh, data for 2016 so far has not been put in. We're going to plug that in manually. There's also a small sheet called assumptions, which talks about the number of employees who are there in the company at this point of time. Uh, there are a couple of blank sheets which we have created, which are around capex schedule and uh, and the free cash flow to equity. Uh, sheet that we have right so now what we go about ahead and do is try and go to the Infosys website and start pulling out the data that we need in order to be able to plug in the data for 2016 which is the most recent year right why are we doing this we are doing this so that we get a sense of what is the size and scale of the company we could have pull the data out from some readily available source as well, but it makes more sense to plug that in ourselves so that we are aware of, okay, what is the size, what is the scale and what kind of numbers are we looking at, right? So we'll move ahead to the Infosys website and understand the layout of that website as we go along. So that's what the Infosys website would look like and that's what the data around the website uh, would look like. Uh, if we go here and click open this menu, you will see a tab called investors so we can click on this tab called investors and it opens up towards a list of data points which are there one of the things within this is something called as reports and filings so we will go to reports and filings we click on reports and filings and what we see here is annual reports so the latest annual report is available here so that's the 2016 annual report and past annual reports are also available in case we need them so if we click on this you'll get a data on all the past annual reports we want the latest one which is available here so I can click on this and what it does is it opens a website or opens the PDF file with the annual report within that annual report within that annual report as we move ahead somewhere around page number 142 out of the total things uh, we have the consolidated balance sheet and the consolidated statement of profit and loss account right so we're looking at the consolidated balance sheet just to be sure about what numbers we are looking at uh, we can we can look at the 2015 data and try and compare it with the data that we have so we have 572 share capital 50164 here and the total liabilities number is 66289. Uh, we see 574, 572 here, 5164 as reserves and surplus, and 66289 as the total number that is there, right? So we're on the right track. We are looking at the correct data, and we probably just need to increase the font size a bit so that things become clearer. And we start now implementing this data or putting in, putting this data for 2016 in our blank template right so share capital is 1144 let's put this number as 1144 uh, we will note that this is exactly double of the last year number which pertains to typically a scenario of number of shares doubling correct this should happen only if the number of shares has doubled and that should probably happen with the face value staying the same that should happen if there is a bonus issuance Right. We've already seen how bonus issuance works. So in both of the last years, their share capital has doubled, which means the number of shares have doubled with the face value remaining the same. Remember, share capital is nothing but shares multiplied by face value. Right. So if the number is doubling, 
then uh, the shares have to double and the face value has to remain the same which will only happen in the case of bonus issuance if it was a split the shares would have doubled but the face value would have gone to half as well right so it looks like a bonus issuance has happened in both these years what's the scene with reserves and surplus for this particular year that's 56682 so we can put in 56682 here what kind of loans does the company have so the company has very little loans 126 crore on a size of equity of about 56000 crore 126 crore of loan and that basically outlines our reason for putting in fcfe here we have free cash flow to equity because there is no debt and because there is negligible debt we can practically ignore this amount of debt and work around uh, with a pure free cash flow to equity model right current liabilities and provisions that we see current liabilities and provisions uh, would basically mean that uh, we have added up all these three items uh, trade payables other current liabilities and short-term provisions and combined together the number is 17189 we're going to plug this number as 17189 what we see here is the total which is 75141 let's check the total 75141 so that matches right let's go ahead and quickly also plug in the numbers for tangible and tangible assets so these numbers are 8637 as appearing here 4543 and 960 so 4543 and 960 non-current investments work out to something like 1817 so I put in 1817 there is a deferred tax asset of 533 so we plug in 533 there and then 6862 is long-term loans and advances uh, what we however see is that in this cell we have added two numbers long-term loans and advances is 4906 plus 85 so here also we will probably add these two numbers 6832 plus 66 right so we can just add these two numbers here that's 6832 plus 66 so we have added and clubbed together other non-current assets as well right let's put in current investments so current investments is 75 Right. these are investments less than one year zero inventories there is no inventory in this company trade receivables 11 330 cash and bank balances 32,697 crore of cash and bank balances the company has given out 7651 crore worth of loans I can drag this cell here because that's the sum of all the current assets and once we do that we can drag this formula here and we realize that the balance sheet balances itself right I can also drag this formula for the rest of the years so that uh, we get a correct value so the balance sheet balances itself and that basically gives us uh, the fact that we have put in the 2016 numbers correctly we will do the same exercise for the PNL pretty quickly so when we go to the PNL on the next sheet here is the PNL data which is available and let's look at this data and plug in this data in terms of the data points that we have right so income from software services and products 62441 uh, so let's go here and put this as 62441 other income is given as 3128 what is other income in this case income earned on the interest on all the cash deposits that the company has then we go to salaries what are the salaries here 34418 so biggest chunk of expenses is salaries right more than half of the revenue goes out in straight away salary payment if you can see each years technical subcontractors where do we see technical subcontractors that's here cost of technical subcontractors 3531 subcontractors could be people who uh, have been outsourced this work of IT uh, development sometimes the company may not be hiring people they may just be outsourcing this particular work to someone else right so that could be a technical subcontractor 
then travel expenses is 2263 this would include all the visa charges and everything and then 1274 software packages and others 2263 1274 so we plug in 2263 1274 and then we go ahead and look at what's the communication expenses that's 449 and consultancy is 779 so 449 and 779 and other expenses for the previous years if you see adds up 2478 and 219 let's see what is 2478 and 219 so that's your 2478 and deferred consideration pertaining to acquisition is 219 so we've added other expenses 2497 plus 110 right so we will do 2497 plus 110 so what we have done in our model is that we have clubbed this and this 2497 we have clubbed this here with this so this 110 and this 2497 is what has gotten clubbed in our model right that's what we do and once we do that we will realize that we get the operating profit and operating margin which has already been calculated for the previous few years we can plug in the number for depreciation and amortization that's given here one two six six there is no interest expense you will note that the company does not have any other interest expense that comes out so it's a small the, the loans were minimal so there is no interest expense tax expenses 5315 minus 14 so that's going to be 5301 and I can drag the PBT which is a formula on this side and we get the final profitability number which is 13681 13681 is what we get here then they do a small adjustment a minor adjustment for share in net profit or loss of associate of about three crores and they arrive at 13678 we we'll leave it here for the time being and then we will see if we want to make any other adjustments right so that's basically the PNL that has been projected as well uh, projected is the wrong term here so essentially the PNL has been plugged in for the previous year it just gives a size and sense of scale of this particular firm they do revenues worth about 60,000 crore and they do profits worth about 13,000 crore that's the size of this particular company right now how does Infosys make money how does Infosys make money is an important consideration for us Infosys has certain number number of employees let's say it has 100 employees there is a utilization rate that it says what does utilization rate mean it means people getting billed right what does it mean people getting billed no you, you can say that 80 percent is the utilization rate which means employees billed to the client is 100 into 80 and they will get billed for a number of hours how would you calculate number of hours there are about 250 trading days in the year 250 days where you will work because out of 52 weeks uh, uh, every week there are two holidays so you have 52 into 5 roughly about 250 days give or take another few holidays that are there and every day you work for eight hours so everyone gets billed for 2000 hours approximately and uh, you have uh, a certain billing rate that is going to apply and then you have a revenue number so practically if you have been given a billing rate let's say the billing rate is 2000 rupees an hour or let's put this as 3000 rupees an hour right this is in rupees per hour can I calculate the revenue I have 80 employees who are getting billed for 2000 hours each multiplied by 3000 which is the billing rate and I get the total revenue of the firm correct that's basically how Infosys works so what data do we need we need the employees data we need the data for utilization rate which then multiplied will give us the data for the number of employees build we know the number of hours in the year that cannot change we need the billing rate which will give us the revenue so practically we have all this data with us this data is available 
right? This set of data is available with us. Now, if we have the billing rate, we can calculate the revenue. That's a straight multiplication. If we have the revenue, we can calculate the billing rate, right? What we realize that is for historical years, we have revenue. So can I back calculate the billing rate for Infosys, right? We can. And for that, what we will need is we will need to put in the number of employees that the firm has, right? So the firm gives year end number of employees and there is a gross addition, total number of new job offers made. There is an attrition, how many people left. So gross minus attrition is your net addition. Gross minus attrition is your net addition. Net addition is also the difference between last year number and this year number. So that should also work out, right? Whichever way you calculate that. This data is available. This data is also given by Infosys, both in its annual report. And if you click on reports and filings, then there are some quarterly reports which are available, right? So let's click on the quarterly reports page and you're going to find a lot of quarterly filings and reports. So we can, let's, let's actually go back and look at this. So previous results here, quarterly results, previous results. Let's click on that and every quarter there's a detailed result page. So we click on Q4 of previous year. Now within this, we look at something called as the fact sheet. This is a very important document in the context of what Infosys reports. Uh, other IT firms might report it elsewhere in some form or fashion. But if we download this fact sheet, they give us data in terms of total revenues. They give us data in terms of what is the geographical split of the, of the revenue that they get. They give us data in terms of what business segments they're getting the revenue from what industries are giving them this revenue, what is the number of clients that they have, and somewhere here they also give the employee metrics, right? So we see year ended, last year was 176, 187. That's my number, 176, 187. What was the gross addition? 53, 386. That's 53, 386. What was the attrition? 37, 604. So that's 37, 604. And the net addition number was basically 15,782, right? What is the data for 2016? Do we see the data for 2016? Total employees is 194044. Now this remember is year end number of employees. We may find that during the year, these employees got added linearly and hence we may want to find out average number of employees during the year. What's the gross addition? If we gave out offers to 52,545 people, 52545, what was the attrition? The attrition was at, attrition is the number of people leaving the jobs, right? So 34,688 is attrition. The difference of these two is 17,857, which is also the difference of this year employees minus last year employees, 17,857, correct? That's what gives us the year end number of employees for Infosys, right? That's the data we plug in for employees. We can now find out average number of employees and for average number of employees, we can just take the average of this year and the last year, right? We're just assuming that half of these two, the sum of these two is the average that we're looking at. So that's the average number of employees that we're looking at in this particular aim. And that's the number of employees we have to do our calculations on during the year, right? That basically kind of plugs in whatever historical data we needed. We need one more data point, which is the utilization rate. And we'll search for that in our subsequent videos. Thank you.